Hello and welcome to this course on design practice. Uh, I am Shantanu Bhattacharya, I will be the instructor for this course. So let us look at design. What is really design and what is design or what is the status of design in the world today? So design basically emerged more as a discipline I would say from uh, almost when people started looking into sensibly design as, um, as a organized subject was from uh, post World War II where there were several mishaps um, which happened to all the airplanes and people realized that there is a human side of all the story behind uh, engineering cannot cater uh, standalone to every uh, requirement. So there has to be some kind of a confluence or merger between the human side and the engineering side. So uh, the challenge today that our country uh, really has is that you know we are lacking in uh, trained manpower as regards um, global designers who can change businesses go in a certain direction because businesses today are treated as uh, you know more about people. They are not about uh, what really you sell or uh, what are the added advantages that will come to you if you sell something, but it is about whom you are selling and what are their aspirations and can we track that aspiration back into our designs and our products or our systems. So uh, the need really is this uh, producing global designers with uh, some Indian sensibilities where the aspects of more or less everything that is related to this side of the world, uh, the Southeast Asian economy can be trapped somehow with the spirit of design uh, in, uh, in the center of it. So uh, my uh, course that I am going to teach uh, as design practice would actually first look into uh, some definitions related to design or what are the requirements of a design and this is an academic course. So we would start pointing out uh, different aspects of uh, product design as well as partially maybe user experience design uh, along the way learning some basic tools and techniques which would be needed by individuals who try to get trained in the area of designing systems or products or experiences for people. Okay. And so these are some organized tools which the knowledge of which is probably important for all the new beginners in the area of design uh, to start designing for uh, different situations. So the basic objectives here are to create design thinkers, design entrepreneurs, design leaders, uh, so on and so forth. So what is really the state of design in the world today? If I uh, were to look at design as an opportunity, so the best example is uh, an article from New York Times that got published about uh, a couple of years back when the new wave of design uh, came uh, as one of the dominant forces in the industry. So this article uh, actually drafted by or written by Rob Walker uh, says that it is a golden age of design and thanks to the convergence of creativity, technology and big money that finally the heyday of the field may be upon us. Okay. So there are a lot of uh, underlying uh, facts which are covered in this article because of which uh, you know this article got published. So obviously uh, the whole field of design has kind of uh, changed from just uh, designing something which is just a sort of a basic you know mass customization based or need based to something which is actually related to the experience related to using of a product. So it has received a worldwide recognition as an essential component for what we today call people centered innovation and people centered design. Okay. For example, the best example can be, uh, can be pointed out here in this particular image which talks about uh, this remote uh, you know which is like mostly used for VCRs or telephones and people find it so much unwanted and with so many features which can typically drive all consumers crazy that this concept of a remote although it makes life easier and it, it satisfies a basic need that uh, you could sit at certain place and relax while operating equipments without going up to the equipment and switching on. Uh, but instead of the fact that it addresses the basic needs, it is highly confusing on the layout for the consumer so that people would simply not like to use it. Okay. So how can I make a difference to it? How can I use this people's thought of designing something where uh, it will be very, very easy for a person to handle uh, this issue never got into business before the new design wave started uh, occurring. And so today the exact map of 
perception of a consumer's mind is what is needed for doing good designing or actually uh, what we know today as designing. So, today products embedded with software is becoming a norm. Uh, the idea here is to make the usability easy. Uh, the idea also here is to somehow be able to uh, get into the brain or mind of a consumer and find out what exactly is his liking and that liking should be somehow mapped into the product. So, that uh, you know through the innovative strategies that people build and that is what design should be about. Okay. So, to typically all the service distinctions of features related to the product or you know the post uh, productization uh, service requirements of a product they are all blurring uh, slowly and fading away towards what we know as experience of a product. Okay. So, the main theme here the central theme here today in design is how to shape that experience by uh, you know shaping or, or the, the product or shaping the, uh, the design that you are actually building based on the exact aspirations or needs and that is quite psychological as a process you need to be able to make a mental map of the thinking of an individual. Okay. And so, uh, obviously you need so many different tools to uh, get to the nerve center of the problem about what aspiration a user has that obviously it has to be studied as a new discipline okay, of so called design. So, they basically uh, target uh, user experience to begin with and try to map that into all the you know, you know innovations that go into a product uh, and, and, and this way as I will show you in the following few examples products simply change definitions, products simply change as boundaries. Okay. But what can be visualized as a product about uh, let us say tens of years back is no longer considered to be a product anymore or a good product anymore because there are so many different variants because of the usability and the user sense and the user aspiration that uh, the shape, the size, the form of the product has probably gotten completely changed in the current day. So, currently uh, it is it is strongly felt that there are more than about 10,000 odd designers trained designers uh, which are needed okay, uh, by our nation and probably at this level we are producing not more than about 300 trained designers. So, there is of course, a gap and so this as a discipline needs to be inculcated okay, into the Indian academic domain. So, that people can evolve with uh, design sensitivity and design sensibility okay, towards the global arena. So, let us look at some of the very basic innovations uh, related to the user experience design that I have been talking about, uh, about in the last uh, few minutes. So, uh, when we talk about design and innovation the best example that we can think of is the company PepsiCo. We all are aware that PepsiCo is in the produce in, in, in the habit of producing and selling their main line of products are junk food, but still they are in business. Although the fact remains that a junk food uh, you know is bad everybody has this aspiration in mind today, everybody has this know how in mind today and then it is not a healthy practice to eat much junk food, but still they happen to be in business. And if we look at the underlying agenda that PepsiCo has or in building its products and uh, the underlying need mapping that they do and the kind of efforts that they put in order to be in business, you will actually be able to appreciate what a designer can do which can change something irrespective of a very strong driving force about not uh, about a consumer not approaching a product. Okay. Still uh, they can approach this and they can be in business. Okay. So, if, if so this is what uh, the chief design officer of PepsiCo Mauro Poshini has to say that I strongly believe that design and innovation are exactly the same things. Design is more than the aesthetics and artifacts associated with the product. It is a strategic function. It focuses on what people want, what people need, what people dream of that crafts experiences across the full brand ecosystem that are meaningful and relevant for the customers. So, according, a recent, according to a recent article which came up in Harvard Business Review. Uh, PepsiCo has made a lot of strides towards mapping the snacking behavior of women. One of the reasons why uh, PepsiCo wanted to do that is they wanted to change their product line from the earlier catchphrase which was available to people to design things for 
uh, you know uh, producing the snack pouches for uh, this particular consumer segment uh, that either shrink it or pink it okay so basically what it meant is that either you make the snack packet small carryable into a small uh, purse uh, probably carried by the consumer or you know pin, paint it pink so that uh, pink is a color which is quite liked by uh, women folks women consumers so on and so forth so uh, the, the new study has shown the new snacking behavior study has shown that typically women folk would hate to stain their fingers okay as uh, they chew they would hate uh, the, the crunchy chewing sounds which come during the chewing process or uh, they would like to have a small pack which can be stored somewhere neatly uh, when you have not consumed or when, when the concerned person has not consumed uh, it fully and so basically that gave a lot of definitions about how you can design the right package size or design the packaging in a proper manner or uh, for example for uh, avoiding chewing uh, sounds or crunchy sounds the snack may be designed in a manner so that it is otherwise uh, comfortable it gives a good feeling but it avoids uh, this problem of creating sounds while chewing etc. So a lot of this research has actually technically gone into the PepsiCo products for it to be uh, in business. So that is how closely the, uh, the user segment is being mapped for building products which are likable by all. So uh, the same comes true for this mixing spire which um, was you know made because people had a requirement of picking and choosing the drink that they liked mix it in a proper manner uh, you know with a lot of flexibility so that a variety of taste ranges could be had uh, prior to this probably uh, there would be only certain tastes which would be available for products discreetly available in the market. So these are the kind of innovations that lead you forward to be front line in the business where uh, you know the, the act of designing uh, comes into picture and so from that aspect the experience design of a, of a particular product by a certain consumer becomes the forefront okay, of carrying out design. Now it is a separate issue that which will also be a part of this course is that how underlying uh, manufacturing capabilities or experiences could be packed together so that you could do everything at a low price structure. So uh, the, the details that I will make during the course here is that how uh, you could make differences to a way that the aspiration is mapped into a product from the market side into the basic process side okay so that a complete realization may happen a realization of an experience associated with the product may happen really quickly at a low cost so there are a few more examples which shows about how design can really improve uh, this uh, right here shows uh, the Indian market you know the it is it's something like you know this uh, supermarket which is somewhere uh, you know in one of these western countries uh, vis a vis this the new uh, farm of the supermarket which happens here is offered by Big Bazaar which according to Kishore Biani uh, the CEO of Big Bazaar uh, is a form of organized chaos okay. So if you look at this particular structure right here of the famous big bazaar layout design is that this targets the largest middle class consumer segment which is used to such kind of you know chaotic marketplaces uh, with all these containers for example you know any shop that you will go uh, today in a local grocer would resemble something like this. So this resemblance gives them a, a sort of a homecoming feeling which uh, enables uh, probably a shoot up in the total sale and purchase index and uh, therefore uh, design per se is so important because you are able to map uh, a certain usability requirement okay in terms of attracting a segment you know to, to uh, a certain layout comes very clear from uh, this instance quoted here. In fact, uh, if you look at the new catch line of Big Bazaar, it says Ne India Ka Bazaar. Okay. So it is like what it resembles the Indian marketplace here. This is a vegetable section of the Big Bazaar, and you can see that how uh, very nicely, as it generally happens in a, in a normal vegetable market, uh, things have been put in place so that that organized chaos can sort of attract consumers and make them at home and they do not really mind paying a little bit extra 
for the additional facilities which are available to over and above this organized chaos. So, that is what people centered design today is in the world. Another very uh, important example that I would mention here is this uh, tool Nano Ganesh uh, developed by uh, an entrepreneur Santosh uh, Oswal. So, this is actually a small electronic uh, module which is connected through uh, mobile okay, and an app so that farmers could control uh, the switching off and on of pumping stations which are quite far away into the fields uh, by you know using a GSM module and giving an instruction to a small controller which is otherwise present uh, near the pump. So, this gives you uh, a sort of innovation which uh, happens to be the answer for a need which was underlying for several decades of farmers uh, having to take this trouble to walk miles into a field in order to switch on and off a pump so that they could irrigate suitably uh, their crops. Okay. So, this now is possible by sitting at your uh, room and trying to control. So, so this need never got mapped before this kind of a technology evolved okay. and the technology per se is very simple with simple options. So, this is what today's design is in the world that design for the need and uh, design in a manner so that the market comes to you because of the innovation that you put in your product. Uh, this is what the Nano Ganesh really looks like okay? and it is operated through a, a GSM module and it is basically used for starting on and off a pump set. Another very uh, useful example uh, can be uh, for this product sold by PNG. So, Procter and Gamble spent as much time uh, to ask this question or ask the right question that people spend so much of time to clean the mop uh, so that it is sometimes even much more than spending time to clean the floor. Okay. So, there is got to be a better way out uh, to design the map mop in a way so that you know this whole issue of cleaning the mop gets eliminated and this led to the development of this uh, uh, mop with a stick concept where the mop is disposable it could be removed after every mopping okay and so it puts together because of the users small user convenience that you have made into this product uh, based on the aspirations of people who are actually uh, using these for sweeping or cleaning purposes just make a small difference that they don't have to clean the mop anymore so you're sending a line of business making uh, another uh, you know a supply chain okay which is actually profitable to your organization and it is mapping the needs so people are buying it uh, you could of course create a manufacturing situation where this comes overall at a very low cost so that people who are cost conscious also get attracted into this market segment. So, the new problem uh, that people uh, started thinking of at PNG when they designed this product is how to provide a better cleaning tool than a mop with less time spent on cleaning the mop itself. Okay, so, the solution is right here a wet towel on a stick uh, that could be thrown. Uh, thrown away on soil. So, basically having a use and throw kind of product here. So, this product by the by the Swiffer was an instant success. Uh, it led to a chalking off of about 100 million dollars in sales uh, giving an annual sales revenue of about 500 million dollars. This shows the power of innovation into mapping the thought of the consumer into any product uh, that could exist. So, this uh, uh, this event actually happened in 2014 when uh, uh, the uh, a banker and a financial firm Capital One in the in the U.S. bought this design path, uh, this this design company Adaptive Path in the Bay Area. Uh, if we look at the basic reason for this acquisition, it was that the banker wanted to get uh, the right kind of user experience design spirit in its services. Uh, that it would offer uh, which would be again digital as well as non digital to the customer because of which uh, they acquired a whole design firm in order to uh, provide uh, uh, the requisite design support or design help. So, this is what the general trend in business is today that if we invest in design uh, if you invest at the right time particularly during the inception uh, of uh, a business then your uh, sale and purchase index uh, uh, happens to almost go to 
three times, almost two and a half to three times as has been seen uh, by various companies. So, in fact, what uh, uh, a company motive strategy is along with working along with an institute, a design institute, Luma Institute has actually gauged something called design value index, which is a term based on uh, the overall sentiment within a company that how uh, design friendly a company could be. And they have identified close to about 15 companies where uh, the major returns which come back to a company or the way that the product line changes is based on uh, the user experience design aspect okay, of the, the products. So, what they find out is that there is a jump in the design value index, uh, which, which has been mapped by uh, a company called Motive Strategies recently about uh, a year back, while working in collaboration with uh, a design firm, uh, a design management institute in US. <coughs> Basically, uh, what they have found out that in 10 years, uh, almost a 10,000 dollar investment in, a, uh, in design centric companies would have yielded returns, which are probably 228 percent greater than the same investment in the sale and purchase. Okay. So, basically it is the design which drives the business, it is very, very clear from, from that strategy. So, the work study that has been done here is mostly uh, from about 75 publicly traded firms out of which 15, uh, which are again listed here. Uh, are the ones which really value design or uh, they are able to introduce uh, more of design interventions towards their final sales. And uh, it has been found that out of those 75 publicly traded companies, the 15 that are selected here uh, have tremendous amount of improvement in sale and purchase index because of a small investment in the design area. So, that is how design can drive exceptional returns for its, uh, for its shareholders. So, basically the thinking that should be in today's business is that uh, one has to ask the question why not. Okay. Why not is that golden band between research based design and creative design uh, that we as designers are superly positioned to maximize. So, uh, of course, Tony Fadel we all know as the famous guy associated with the iPod. Uh, Lebanese American inventor, designer, entrepreneur and also now an angel investor. So, <coughs> that is what uh, the basic question in design thinking in businesses is that why not. Okay. Because of this why not several things have come up by the by. For example, Procter and Gamble asked why not that why not uh, somebody uses a mop uh, with an idea of uh, use and throw mop and a stick which retains uh, between people. So, changing the product from the main product line which is the mop to that of a stick which is retained is a very bold decision, but <coughs> it makes wonders. So, that is why in the Swiffer or uh, the basic concept of Uber anyone can drive anyone, why not? So, that has to be a question that has to be again asked and unless people who have this design thinking into place and people who can in influence company decisions or board decisions with this idea of think out of the box only they can make businesses happen, business successful and businesses grow. Uh, look at the iPod for example, music library outside the player, why not? Somebody asked the question why not? That is why uh, probably Tony Fadel could have his way into the Apple uh, incorporated and made what is very popularly known as the iPod. <coughs> so, that is how one has to uh, understand the design thinking process. A little bit of history about how design really happened so far and continued, it grew uh, probably if you look at. So, uh, this really dates back all the way to 1870, when um, the very famous Frederick W. Taylor and Dilbert introduced what is known as ergonomics in a work environment. So, basically they did a redesigning of the work atmosphere and environment, so that it was geared towards uh, productivity. Okay. So, of course, the whole whole area of ergonomics was found by uh, Jastrzebowski uh, in, in, in the very same year. And then of course, there was this Baha movement, uh, uh, which was actually another ya sort of a uh, pointer towards how design could be important and what could be the relationship between art, craft and, and, and society. Uh, the more important uh, need for a design intervention came up 
during the World War II, uh, because of uh, repeated plane crashes and the increased need felt by mankind to have man machine interaction to a probably uh, a better level. So, aspects which are related to human engineering or let us say engineering and psychology merger came up uh, in 1940s. Again uh, the ergonomics research society in UK uh, was heavily involved in the 50s to look at some of the industrial problems. Uh, human safety, safety uh, was a very major concern raised and then you know human factors uh, led to aspects related to redesigning of products. For example, uh, from the general Alexander Graham Bell telephone which is based on dial, the push button telephone emerged as a possibility in the design, the impact of uh, environmental aspects on creating productivity in the work atmosphere or reduction of stress in the workplace became uh, almost a very, very common uh, matter of study and common purview. So, in 1980s again uh, if we move forward uh, we see the specialization related to man machine to human computer interaction. On the cognitive side uh, or the let us say the man machine interaction also known better as human computer interaction <coughs> interface uh, was necessitated. Again ergonomics was interfaced with all this and uh, then there were other concepts which generally emerged which led to finally, what we call the user experience concept which is actually uh, merged now with design thinking and design innovation process. So, in between in the 90s there was usability engineering, user centered design which actually converged into this user experience design which has now for the last about uh, one decade or so or more than a decade I would say continues to be the central theme of all design practices. So, if you look at this uh, earlier uh, probably back in these 1800s, people used to ask uh, the, the very question that users, what is the need of users in making products or designing products. Uh, then people started thinking that products do have capabilities and they also have limitations and so therefore, the users somehow would define uh, what are the capabilities of those products, because uh, the usability of the product is dependent on the user and his inability to handle the product properly may result in some limitations or may rise in some kind of failures, uh, which was felt you know uh, during handling of machinery. Then uh, of course, there was a uh, series of on a, or a series of decades starting from 60s onwards, where uh, the concept was how to aesthetically make things pleasant, so that they can sell. For example, the automotive design if you look at uh, was by and large very rugged prior to the 60s, but after the 60s there was a gradual improvement in the aesthetics and more compact spaces uh, were envisioned within the automotive which made uh, lightweight, uh, very user friendly city driven automobiles quite commonplace in business, which we also know as small cars or small segments. Uh, so, then in the 80s uh, again uh, users were treated to be almost similar to computers. So, therefore, uh, there would be a compatibility of the users with the products, uh, which would be uh, worked upon. Finally, uh, people started realizing in the 90s that emotions also are a very important part of a user and you cannot treat users as simply computers or robots, uh, who are bound to perform something while handling an equipment, but they do have some emotions and there is a factor of carelessness or carefulness in uh, how you design the interfaces you know with such machines or such engineering tools, so that people can give a better deliverance. And then finally, in today's light uh, with all this presentation that I have made for the last uh, few slides, it so seems that it is the people who impact really the business and they change and refine and redefine. And therefore, if I design rightly uh, for the people, uh, I think uh, great strategies can work out for businesses to be really successful. So, this is a kind of an introductory talk, which I wanted to deliver today, uh, based on why uh, the whole idea of design or what should be followed in design. Now, in the following uh, lectures, we would focus more on uh, product design aspects 
also aspects related to when you, you look at the design process, what are the kind of tools that you should be used to in order to um, realize a product or a system. And uh, the next lecture that I would give following this would be almost dedicated to uh, what is a product or what are the kind of products or what are the values associated with such products okay, and what could be the kind of features or aspects, engineering aspects associated with the product, uh, which would lead into an organized way of design thinking, so that a layout of a product can be planned. So, thank you very much uh, for patiently listening to me.